please stand. Set our hearts on fire, Lord. Kuria kara shala la la kira kara shala la la. Kira kara shala la la kuria kara shala la la. We preach. Holy, holy, holy are you, O Lord. We glorify you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. For you are good, God, Lord. Lord, let us experience your goodness. The goodness of your heart. The goodness of your love. The goodness of your mercy. The goodness of your healing lord we come before you broken we come before you sinful we come before you weak we come before you imperfect lord restore us bring us healing bring us restoration set us free oh lord set the captives free right now lord jesus set the captives free jesus 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 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Good morning, everyone. So welcome to Persian or St. Mary's, those who are visiting and those who are watching online. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, the octave, which is the eighth day of our celebration of Easter. And today, we're at like the apex, okay? And today is also called Divine Mercy Sunday. We're in, if you come in a state of grace, you've confessed your sins and you receive communion, there will be removal of your sin and removal of any punishment of sin. That's why we're going to do a sprinkling, right? Because this is kind of like a, a rebirth, right? And uh, I think you were here. I, I did the sprinkling last Sunday. Uh, somebody said, Father, I think you need to use a water gun. <laughs> okay. So let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created which will be sprinkled, sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water, you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of re regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two pictures only? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thou found out every blessing to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me songs.
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the fate of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There is not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. 
They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, and not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord.
is because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening in the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. How many of you remembered uh, back in 1999, there was a big scare in 1999. I don't know if you remember, it's about the Y2K bug, okay? So people were afraid because a lot of, uh, of course, all the industries that were using computer already during that time, and people were afraid because the computer clock of these computer systems, they were afraid that from 1999, it won't go to 2000 it will go to 1900, okay? And because of that, there's gonna be a glitch. There's gonna be a computer crash, okay? That's why people were so afraid that they started stocking up food and water and also candles. Uh, remember that in 1999? How many of you remember that? Okay, so, and people were saying this, this could be the end of the world, okay? This could be Armageddon. And then so people were afraid. And of course we know, we know, right? That nothing happened on January 1st on 12 midnight. Nothing happened, okay? And I know one person, I know one person who was not afraid, okay? 
In fact, what he was looking forward to year 2000. And that person is John Paul II, Pope John Paul II. In fact, he would encourage people and would tell them, do not be afraid. He would always say that, do not be afraid. And he's also looking, he was also looking forward to year 2000 because he's going to be canonizing a fellow Polish nun named Sister Faustina from Poland, okay? And uh, Sist Sister Faustina was entrusted with this divine mercy message. And the reason Pope John Paul II wanted to canonize Sister Faustina in Rome, it's because the divine mercy message is not just for the Polish people. It, for, it is for all of us. It is for the whole world, okay? Five days after that, on, so Saint Faust, Sister Faustina was canonized on April 30, 2000, okay? Five days later, he shocked the world, Pope John Paul II, shocked the world by instituting the second Sunday of Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday, okay? And again, he instituted this, this, this feast day, not just for Poland, but for the whole world, okay? Because again, this message is for all. And he said on May 5th, 2000, he said, this is the happiest day of my life. Why? It's because he knows, he knows that this Divine Mercy Sunday, many people will benefit from the graces that people will receive on this Divine Mercy Sunday. That's why he said, this is the happiest day of my life, okay? And of course, this is based on the Lord's desire that was communicated to Sister Faustina that he wanted to have a Divine Mercy Sunday. So this is the message of Jesus to Sister Faustina. In Dyer 6.99, it said, Jesus said to St. Faustina, my daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean, ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive commun Holy Communion shall obtain complete, complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Removal of all punishment, okay? Let's say after this Mass, you know, you were able to fulfill this requirement. You went out. Unfortunately, you get hit by the car. You die. You skip purgatory. You go straight to heaven, okay? <laughs> no, really. <laughs> so Jesus continued, let no soul fear to draw near to me, okay? It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter, mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Isn't this true? People are weighed down by their guilt and shame because of the sins that they've committed, okay? Unless they turn to the fount of mercy, they will not experience any peace, right? Isn't it true? If we're experiencing guilt and shame from all that we've done and we don't believe in the mercy of God, we will not have peace. We will not have peace. I guarantee you that. Okay? Now, in the writings, of, uh, in the writings and in the homilies of Pope John Paul II, he would say that the divine mercy is the answer to the world's problem. World's problem. The answer to the world's problem, divine mercy. And this message of the divine mercy is for the third millennium, okay? Third millennium. John Paul II, because of his great devotion to the divine mercy, he died on April 2, 2005, on the eve 
of the Divine Mercy Sunday. So you see how the Lord honored, how the Lord honored His great desire that the Divine Mercy will be promoted, that He died on the eve on, of the Divine Mercy Sunday. In the first letter of John, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's what we're going to experience today in this Divine Mercy Sunday, okay? God is faithful to forgive and cleanse us from all sin, but the justice of God is not compromise. The justice of God is not compromise. He is just in that He demanded the death of His Son as an atoning sacrifice to pay the penalty of the sins of the whole world. Okay? So that the, the, so that the world, you know, the, the penalty of uh, the sins of the world will be taken away by this atoning sacrifice. So we, we deserve justice. And yet the Lord is giving us undeserving mercy, okay? And that's what the cross is all about, right? The cross is all about giving us this undeserving mercy. And yet people doubt. People doubt what Jesus did on the cross. That's why on the 17th century, Jesus appeared to Saint M Sister M Margaret Mary Alacoque in the appearance of the sacred heart of Jesus. It's as if it's saying that for other people, because they still doubt of what I did on the cross, I'm now exposing my heart, crowned with thorns, burning with love for each and every one of us. And yet the people continue to doubt of this love and mercy that Jesus in the 1930s appeared to Sister Faustina in the image of the divine mercy with two rays coming out from his heart. It's as if those two rays are the two arms, open wide, waiting for us to come so that He will be able to embrace us. And yet, people continue to doubt, okay? That's why we see here there's, there's, there's similarities or there's, there's, a, there's similarity between the cross, the sacred heart image, and also the divine mercy image, okay? That's why today, it's so fitting that we're hearing from the gospel today about the doubting Thomas, okay? As we know from, as we heard from the gospel, on the day of the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples except Thomas. He appeared, showed his hands and his feet, okay? And the disciples were amazed. So they told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the risen Lord. What did Thomas say? Thomas said this, okay? Thomas said this, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and his side and put my finger in it, I will not believe. After eight days, Jesus appeared to the disciples, and this time Thomas is there, and Jesus told Thomas, put your finger and put it in my side. G Thomas approached Jesus and did what Jesus asked him to do. He, by his finger, he touched Jesus' side and then said, my Lord and my God. Uh, Thomas was the first apostle who worshiped Jesus, okay, as Lord and God. The first time Jesus appeared to the, to the disciples, they didn't worship him. They were amazed, but they didn't worship him. But Thomas was the first apostle who worshiped Jesus as Lord and God. Now, let's say Thomas, you know, when Jesus appeared, told him to touch the side. What if Thomas said, I think I'm hallucinating. I think I'm seeing things. Would he approach Jesus and touch his side and profess my Lord and my God? Yes or no? No, no, okay? He will forever doubt 
And I think that's the, the case for every one of us. For those who are doubting that we could have forgiveness of our, our, our sins, right? We doubt. But the Lord is calling us, come, touch my side, which means experience my mercy and love, right? And when we approach Jesus, when we trust Jesus, and when we experience his love, what will happen there is that we will receive the graces that flows out of that mercy. We will experience healing, body, mind, soul. We will be restored. Our soul will be restored, okay? What will happen there is that we will be set free from any evil spirits that is oppressing us. What happened there also is that we will experience freedom from bondage, addiction, right? When we go to Jesus, Jesus has that power to set us free, to heal us, to restore us. And that's what's going to happen. In the diary 1507, Jesus said to St. Faustina, all grace flows from mercy, and the last hour abounds with mercy for us. Let no one doubt con concerning the goodness of God. Even if a person's sins were as dark as night, God's mercy is stronger than our misery. One thing alone is necessary, that the sinner set ajar the door of his heart, be it ever so little, to let in a ray of God's merciful grace, and then God will do the rest. So that's what the Lord is just asking us. Even if it's just a small opening of our heart, so that the, lay, the ray of God's merciful grace will come upon us. We will experience His love and His mercy, okay? That's why the Lord is encouraging us not to doubt. In the image of the divine mercy, what's at the bottom? What are the, those words at the bottom? of the divine mercy image. Why does Jesus need to put those words there? It's because we doubt, right? We easily doubt. That's why he's reminding us to say this simple but powerful prayer. Jesus, I trust in you. Even if I struggle to trust, Lord, give me the grace, even the willingness to trust in your mercy, okay? We've been hearing from Father Bob Bedard about his vision of a church explosively alive. Is he talking about the church building? Yes or no? No. He's talking about us, people in the church, right? To become explosively alive, okay? When we are explosively alive, this church will be explosively alive. But I think in my humble opinion, one thing, one of the several things maybe that is an obstacle for us to become explosively alive is because we doubt in the mercy and the love of God in our life, okay? And so that's why, you know, we need to remove this obstacle and then we come to Jesus and experience His mercy, His mercy through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this mercy is not just for us. We need to share this to people out there, to our loved ones, to the people that, that we meet on the streets, to our friends. They need to hear about this good news, okay? In Isaiah chapter 62, verse 10, it says, go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, take out the stones, life Lift up a banner for the people, okay? So what the Lord is saying is that for us who are practicing, who are believers, we need to go through the gates, okay? As we go through the gates, we are preparing the way for non-believers to come so that they would experience the mercy and the love of God, okay? So how do we go through the gates? In Psalm 100 verse 4, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Okay? When we give our thanksgiving to God, we are thanking him 
for what he has done for us. For sending his son who died on the cross out of love for us. We are thanking him for that. We are praising him for his attribute. Not for what he has done, for who he is. He is a merciful God. Okay? So we enter into these gates and enter into these courts with praise and thanksgiving. And I'm not talking about just singing some praise and worship songs. No. It is from the core of our being because we have experienced the mercy of God. From the core of our being, we praise Him and we thank Him. And that will pave the way. That will pave the way. When people come, they will feel the anointing in this parish. People, I, I've encountered people, people are saying, Father, when I come here at St. Mary's, I'm experiencing like the presence. Have you heard that? Have you heard that, people saying that? I've heard, i experienced the presence. I feel like the anointing, okay? Just like what we experienced during Easter Vigil. And not just during Easter Vigil on Sundays. But I tell you, it's going to intensify. It's going to intensify. If we enter his, go his gates and his courts with praise and thanksgiving, coming from the core of our being, because we have experienced the love and the mercy of God, it will pave the way for people to come. And we will, become, we will experience this church become explosively alive. And that's the revival that we are looking for, right? We can't manufacture revival. Revival comes from God. But at least we could properly dispose ourselves for a revival to happen, okay? That's why on April 20, you know, St. Mary's, the, the, the leadership team, the parish council, and the staff, we're going to go out for a day We're in we do a revival plan discernment day, okay? We're in, we pray, and we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit on how to make this church become more revived and more alive. And we want your participation in this. We need your prayers. We need your perspective, your outlook. That's why at the end of this Mass, I'm going to show a QR code. And when you scan the QR code with your phone, this is the only time that you're allowed to take out your phone, okay? And you will answer a two-question survey. Is that too much to ask? Two-question survey, okay? It's not 20 question, two question survey. Just pray before the Lord, ask, you know, for any leading, if you have any prophetic sense or whatever sensing, and then you answer those two question survey. You have one week to do this, don't delay. If, if you remember to do it today, to do it today. The following Monday, we will get all your inputs, you know, put it together, and then bring it on April 20 so that your inputs will be considered, okay? In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're hoping really, to experience this Divine Mercy Sunday. And when we see the Divine Mercy image, okay, the Lord is offering us this undeserved mercy. And the Lord is encouraging us not to doubt. Come to me. The Lord is encouraging us. Come to me so that you will experience my mercy, so that you will experience the grace that flows out of that mercy, that you will experience healing of body, mind, and soul. That your, soul, that your soul will be restored, that you will be set free from any evil spirits that are suppressing you, and that you experience freedom from any bondages and addiction. And when that happens, we will see how this church will become explosively alive to the power of the Holy Spirit. Now is your time to take out your phone, scan. Thank you.
I, I hope you're not taking picture of me. I'm sh camera shy. <laughs> just, just the QR code, okay? After mass, after mass, we will also be showing this slide, okay? We just have to continue right now. Let's stand to profess our faith. Let's do the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of our sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Heavenly Father loves us and cares for our needs. In faith, we bring our prayers to Him with confidence inspired by the resurrection of His Son. That church leaders will bear witness to the good news of the resurrection and stay true to the mission entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That leaders of the world will distribute resources fairly among all people. We pray to the Lord. For the grace to forgive, that flowing from God's forgiveness of us, we may forgive those whom we find difficult to forgive. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, especially Mallory McPherson and Joan Milks, that they may experience the healing power of Christ. We pray to the Lord. That the risen Christ will bring the dead to share in his victory. We pray to the Lord. For our special intentions for this Mass, for Marie and Eris Balansag on their anniversary, for the repose of the soul of Shulan Tseng, for the repose of the soul of René Bibor and Ramon Montivla, for the repose of the soul of Frank Bertrand, for the repose of the soul of Marion Adams. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we offer these prayers to you today with confidence in your constant love for us, and through the merits of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending and happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. As they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Marcel, our Bishop, Ivana's auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, grace to grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the fate of your church and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter the room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I just want to be close to your heart. This is where my healing finds its start. Here is where I find my peace, where my soul is finally free. I'm going. your power is found in the roughest waters where I have no choice but to trust you Father where my every fear has to surrender I will trust in you forever take me there oh take me there cause your power cause your power is found in the to trust you for me. 
Given the space. 
I just got the sense that the Lord wants us to say this simple, powerful prayer, Jesus, I trust in you. And the Lord is going to break any doubts, remove any doubts that the Lord couldn't forgive us because of our sins, doubt of his mercy, doubt of his love, doubt of his providence. So let's, let's all pr say together, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Just receive the mercy of our Lord, the undeserving mercy that he is giving us, wiping away, wiping out all our sins, removing any punishment. Let us thank the Lord and praise him for this mercy, for being a merciful God. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. So we just have a, a few announcements, but first of all, uh, so just remain standing. I would just like to welcome those who are here for the first time or those who are visiting. If you feel comfortable raising your hand so that we could acknowledge your presence. Anyone here? Okay, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to St. Mary's. Okay, welcome. We encourage those who are here for the first time to come for five consecutive Sundays. As you may know, we have a great devotion to the Holy Spirit here. Just come with an open heart, even if it's just a small opening. Let the Holy Spirit touch you, and it will surely, I guarantee you, it will transform you. Amen? Okay, so uh, today, Sunday at 3 p.m., join us for our Divine Mercy Holy Hour. We'll pray the final day of the Divine Mercy Novena, and there will be Eucharistic adoration. So this is welcome to, to everyone. All men are invited to our parish men's breakfast on Saturday, April 13th, at 7 a.m. So Gary Meller will be speaking on keeping a prayer journal. Our RSVP now at stmarysottawa.ca slash events. For more news, click on news and events on our website. Um, and also just to remind you of, uh, if you haven't scanned the QR code, maybe you could show it again after mass and then uh, scan it. And then don't do it today, you know, two questions only so that you won't forget. Right? Just do it so that you will be able to participate in what we're trying uh, to do here. Okay? Join us after Mass for coffee downstairs in the hall and to visit the Divine Mercy Library. Prayer teams will be available at the front of the church to pray with you after the Mass. Okay? The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption. Give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia.